Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. It's the first day of the semester at Barkmouth University, and these young doggos are ready to hit the books, eat some homework, and get learning. So while we are surveying the activity around campus, we'll review the types of learning, which are different ways that new behaviors can be acquired, either intentionally or not. The first type of learning we'll cover is associative learning, which of course happens in and around the building for the associate's degree program. Associative learning occurs when an association forms between two events, one of which is usually a behavior and the other a reward or punishment. Once that association exists, an individual often learns to do a behavior without the second event, even if the behavior originally developed in response to it. Examples of this type of learning include a dog automatically drooling at the sound of a bell because they usually get lunch when it rings, or a dog voluntarily sitting to the word sit because they associate that response with receiving a treat. Maybe you realize that these examples describe classical and operant conditioning respectively. It just so happens that these are the two main forms of associative learning, which is why there's a lecture on the classical era in the associates building and a person operating a treat cart out front. If you want to review these two types of conditioning in more detail, we've got a whole sketch on each of them. Now, if an associate's degree feels a little too legit, perhaps the non-associates program's for you. Non-associative learning is any type of learning that does not involve pairing a stimulus and a behavior to change that behavior's frequency. That means non-associative learning does not rely on reward or punishment, hence how the non-associates program doesn't reward or punish students by grading their work. The two types of non-associative learning you're most likely to encounter are habituation and sensitization, which we'll depict right in front of the non-associates program building. This pup over here, their nail-biting habit, that symbolizes habituation, which is when the response to a stimulus lessens the more someone is exposed to it. Seems like whoever planned this celebration didn't really understand their audience. Unlike the freshmen, who are surely hiding beneath their dorm beds right now, this senior pup has heard the start of semester fireworks so many times, she hardly even notices they're happening. Totally habituated. Unfortunately, her distraught pal seems to become dishabituated during his semester abroad. That means his response to a previously habituated stimulus, fireworks, strengthened after he had a break from exposure. And boy, would he be happy to tell you about how things were très more civilized in fireworkless Paris. And uh, please... Don't get him started on how fantastique it was to debate Voltaire over champagne and Camembert at la Sorbonne. Wish he would just take that pretentious trash and shove it up his... <clears throat> um, I didn't mean to, like, literally shove anything up anywhere. But this sensitive fella getting an exam at the campus vet represents sensitization, which is basically the opposite of habituation. With sensitization, a person becomes increasingly more responsive to a stimulus the more times they're exposed to it. And it ain't this dude's first rodeo, so he's very responsive to the sight of that thermometer. Poor bloke knows exactly where that's heading. <sighs> yeah, I was hoping to find a bit more intellectual probing and a lot less physical probing on campus, so let's hit the classroom. This student, observing her painting professor, represents observational learning. And just like this student is learning to paint by copying the professor's technique, observational learning is when one learns a behavior by watching and copying others. Latent learning is a specific type of observational learning, which is why this classroom has a reminder not to be late. When latent learning occurs, someone unintentionally learns something without even realizing they've learned it. Usually, the knowledge only becomes obvious when they have a reason to apply it. Sort of like this janitor who may not realize she's soaking up complex geometry as she erases the board, but give this gal a ball to fetch and she sure as heck in calculated surface area. 
All right, and our last stop at Barkmouth will be a quick drop into the bio lab to take a look at some of the biology behind learning. This neuron-shaped mirror represents none other than mirror neurons, a type of brain cell found in the frontal and parietal lobes. Mirror neurons fire when you do a behavior and when you watch someone else do that behavior. So they're believed to be super important for observational learning. Interestingly, they also fire when you feel an emotion or when you witness someone else feeling emotion. So they might play a big role in empathy too. Then there's long-term potentiation, which this couple with major long-term potential should help you remember. Long-term potentiation has to do with the connection or synapse between brain cells rather than the specific type of brain cells. Specifically, it's a process that makes the connection between two neurons grow stronger the more frequently they're activated. Kind of like how the connection between these two pups just keeps getting stronger. The synapse is strengthened mainly by increasing the number of neurotransmitters released from the ingoing neuron and upping the number of receptors for those neurotransmitters on the receiving neuron. This strengthening of these frequently used connections is believed to play a major role in enabling learning and memory. An opposite process, called long-term depression, can also weaken synapses depending on the frequency of stimulation they receive. A process called pruning removes synapses that aren't used rather than changing their strength. This mostly occurs during childhood and basically declutters the brain to make it more efficient. Ultimately, this makes learning complex information easier. Whew, and to think everybody told these two was just puppy love. Let's uh, recap before more than a beaker starts steaming. <laughs> Associative learning relies on pairing a reward or punishment to an event to change behavior. Classical and operant conditioning are both examples of this. Non-associative learning does not rely on reward and punishment. The main types you'll encounter are habituation and sensitization. Observational learning is just what it sounds like, learning by watching. This includes latent learning, which is when someone unintentionally and unknowingly picks up a new behavior or ability. Finally, while the neural processes that underlie learning are complicated and not fully understood, mirror neurons and long-term potentiation are believed to play a large role in enabling learning. Well, that's a wrap on this campus tour. Hopefully you learned all you need to know about BarkMyth. But to be sure, there'll be a pop quiz to follow. Except for the non-associate students, y'all are off the hook. But do remember to turn in your rawhide sculptures about this experience by next Tuesday.